What's up everyone, Andrew Bainey here, and on today's video we are going to be taking a look at the new baritone on the block. This is the Gretsch Electromatic Baritone Guitar. This video is not sponsored by Gretsch at all. I bought this guitar 100% with my own money at a local store because, as you guys know, baritone guitars are rare to come by, so when I saw this, I thought I'd grab it and do a little video review for you all. So first and foremost, I'm going to show you guys what this guitar sounds like in a full demo mix. Then we're going to talk about the specs of this instrument as well as my thoughts, and we'll end it off on that. So without further ado, this is how the guitar sounds in a full demo mix. Okay, so now that you guys know how the guitar sounds in a full demo mix, we're going to talk a bit about the specs of this instrument. First and foremost, most importantly, is the fact that it is a baritone guitar. This one in particular is a 29.75 inch scale, so just a tiny bit shy of 30 inches. Super long scale, great for down tuning, as I'm sure you all know if you're looking at this guitar, because I'm sure you already know about baritone. I currently have this guitar tuned to drop G using the stock stern gauges, which I believe were like 13 to 72 or somewhere around there. I thought that those string gauges were personally crazy for B standard, they were way too thick. So I brought them all the way down to drop G with ease and this tension feels much better to me personally, but of course your mileage may vary. Really quickly, some other specs of this instrument is that it has a solid mahogany body with a bolt-on maple neck. The fretboard is Laurel with 22 frets and a 12 inch radius. The two pickups are Gretsch mini humbuckers, which I'm gonna get to in a bit. This is probably my least favorite thing about the guitar. Other than that, it has a V stop tail and a three way position switch. So bridge, both or neck, of course. And that's pretty much it for the specs of this instrument. There's not too much crazy going on here. It, really the selling point is the fact that it's a baritone. So my overall thoughts on this instrument are honestly that it's actually pretty good. As I'm sure almost all of you know if you're watching this video, the most sought after guitar is the Squire Baritone Jazzmaster, which I also have. And this is kind of the next best thing on the market or at least mass produced right now. I personally think this actually feels a little bit better than the Squire for the most part, with one big caveat being that I think these pickups are pretty bad personally. I really don't like that they're mini humbuckers because it limits your choices on what you can drop into this guitar because finding pickups that are this size is going to be kind of a problem. It would have been so much nicer if they were proper humbuckers then you can have basically infinite humbucker pickup options and it would be an easy direct swap. But since they're mini humbuckers, you're gonna have to route it out or figure out some alternative way to get bigger pickups in here. So bear that in mind if you're planning on swapping pickups. These pickups are by no means terrible, but I just don't like how low output they are. With that being said, of course this guitar isn't really meant for metal, so I understand why they put these in here, but Man, they are some of the lowest output pickups I've ever personally used. I thought maybe like raising the pickups closer to the strings would help, but honestly it really doesn't. 
If you look at the actual DI waveform, it is so much smaller than every other guitar that I have. And the only way that I eventually got it to sound good for a high gain metal rhythm tone was by actually boosting the input volume uh, on my plugin, which in this case was the Archetype Gojira plugin. Shout out to my Discord member, Sad Boy RD, for that tip, <clears throat> AKA Grant. <laughs> I even tried using a couple of different pedals in front of my amp sim, such as the Savage Boost from Aeris Effects or the 805 from Seymour Duncan, but neither of them really gave me the amount of volume boost that I really needed to make this guitar shine. And I ultimately basically just had to raise the volume of the DI entirely, which is kind of weird. And it might kind of present you with an issue if you're using this guitar with an actual amp, just throwing that out there. It was a kind of a bummer for me. Other than the pickups though, I know I just ranted about those a lot, the overall construction of this guitar is actually pretty good. Um, I don't really have any other complaints about it. It all feels very solid and everything seems to work just as well. The neck pickup on my particular one is a little bit loose. I don't know if you can hear it right there. So for some reason the neck pickup came a little loose and I just didn't bother fixing it because I don't really use the neck pickup anyways. The only other thing that I guess was bothering me a little bit isn't really unique to this guitar, but because it has that tunematic bridge, there is a lot of sympathetic string noise. So to get rid of that, you can just place a block of foam underneath the bridge piece here and above the nut. And that should help most of that issue, but you know, just something to point out as well. But with all that being said, this guitar is around five or $600 US. So it's not that expensive, especially when you compare it to the super expensive price of the used Squire Baritone Jazz Masters, which are going for like a thousand dollars US right now, which is crazy but hey it's your money do whatever you want also side note guitar world kind of like blamed me for the rising prices so i'm i'm sorry i guess that's that's my bad <laughs> but yeah that pretty much covers all of my thoughts on the actual quality of the guitar everything besides those things i mentioned which was mostly just the sympathetic bridge noise and the pickups lacking a bit of volume feels really good everything feels solidly constructed it's got nice weight everything feels very nice on this guitar and i honestly really like how it looks I personally am a huge fan of using things that don't look like they would be metal for metal, which is why I like Jazzmasters so much, but this also doesn't look very metal and it certainly can sound metal, which is always cool. So with that all being said, should you buy this guitar? Well, of course, that's up to you. Personally, I think it is a pretty good buy, again, around that $600 US mark. Can't go wrong, especially when you look at most of the other competing baritones right now. I don't know, a lot of them are really unappealing to me and this was the only one that I thought was an actual interesting competitor to the Squire Baritone Jazzmaster, which is the one everyone's after. So yeah, all in all, I think this guitar is pretty cool. Just again, keep in mind, these pickups are a little eh and uh, you might want to get some extra foam for yourself, but with those two things fixed or adjusted, I think it's pretty good. I think you'll have a good time with it. I know this review was a little more informal than some of my other ones, but I just wanted to quickly do this one because I've had this guitar for a little while now and I've just been crazy busy and I've been meaning to get to this video. So here we are. If you guys are interested in getting the stems, tabs, audio downloads, or a shout out on the screen like these people here, you can find all of that over on my Patreon page. You can plug these DIs right into your own DAW and play with them if you want to see if it sounds good with your tones. That's pretty much all I got to say. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.